Hey guys, Ben here and welcome back to my channel. This week we are continuing the saga of the Miami International Boat Show with round three. which is going to be the Ocean Renegade uh, R5. Just like the Lagoon 420 that we previously covered, this boat is a diesel electric hybrid, but it is just completely the opposite. It's totally streamlined. This is a high performance design by uh, the famous Tony Granger out of Australia. Granger is also known for designing of all things the Sea Wind 1000 many other boats. As usual, I'll have a full spec sheet for you down in the description. If you're interested to go see her, drop me a line. Uh, thanks for tuning in, and I hope you enjoyed the tour. All right, we're back at the Miami International Boat Show, and today we're looking at Oxygen. Uh, this boat, unlike most of the other boats at the show, is actually a brokerage boat, so you can buy it for the cool price of, let's adjust the zoom, $2.1 million. But yeah, it's also pretty new, so it kind of acts like a demo boat. So, can do double duty. All right, so you're looking at the sugar scoops. We've got these nice long extensions here. Make uh, boarding and deboarding the dinghy real easy. You've got your davits there. Unlike most of the other boats at the show, in fact, I think this might be the only catamaran, this boat is an electric boat. So when we open the mechanical space, we find no diesels. In fact, I can put the camera in so far. That is your Torquedo Deep Blue electric motor. So this boat is a diesel electric hybrid. It's a serial hybrid. So it's driven by generators whenever the batteries are empty. We'll go up to the exterior first. You've got this massive, uh, you know, panes of windows that cover the entire side, as well as your solar panels are up top. They've gone with uh, flat solar panels as opposed to, you know, the, the raised glass ones that we'll, uh, we may or may not see on the balance. I'll try and get that video in. And the rigging on the side is a carbon core. So despite the fact that this boat is, uh, you know, 50 plus feet, it's only a single spreader with a single set of diamonds. Notice you've got a, a boom, uh, a wide boom with the bars on the outside. Help hold the mainsail. And yes, this boat is dagger board straight boards, the straight dagger boards, but they do come in at an angle like that. You've got lockers on either side up front, uh, split trampoline with the also triangular nets forward and a really big lingeron. Goes the entire, uh, it doesn't go the entire length of the foredeck because this is a forward cockpit, you know, it's a working cockpit. Not, not for pleasure like a leopard, but uh, we'll, we'll come back to that later. Moving forward, we'll get one last glance of the foredeck area. And then we'll enter into the salon. You also have a traveler that runs the entire, no, almost the entire width of the back seating area. You've got one seating area there and actually underneath this seating area and the galley is where the, uh, actually where the batteries are stored. Batteries on this boat are of course lithium. Uh, you couldn't really use anything else. And uh, I'm told they're warranted for like eight years, which is pretty ridiculous. So it is kind of an open concept space. Um, I mean, this is your sliding door. It's locked in position right now, but cover goes almost the entire length of the cockpit. So it's really kind of intended to be a very connected space, even more connected than your typical catamaran. You've got a deep U-shaped galley here. And the burners are, of course, also electric. You've got storage here. Your oven is there. Your fridge and freezer are down here. 
and your dual base and sink. You've got a uh, L-shaped settee with a drop-down table across from the galley, and we'll dive into the cockpit next because it is uh, it's pretty intricate. All right, starting from left to right for the remainder of the interior, you've got another set of fridge and freezer here. You've got a nav station slash watch station for keeping watches on passage. This boat comes with a combination of B&G electronics and I also see some Simrad. You've got a, and your pull-out ottoman is beneath that. Because I said this boat is electric, it uses Torquedo, so you've got a set of Torquedo throttles and you know it's all electric. You just there's no there's no uh, no resistance to overcome when using those. And this is probably the most strange feature of the boat, maybe even a bit more stranger than the electric, was that this is the only helm, and it actually has a feature we've seen on a lot of recent catamarans, which is that it is a tilt helm. So in order to move it, you just depress this foot pedal here, and you can move it to either the center or lock it into place, left or right, very carefully. We'll go on to the cockpit as well. <laughs> Forward cockpit, that is. We've got a set of stainless steel Anderson winches, and these things are just monsters. I mean, they're, they're basically the best winches money can buy, in my opinion. You've got all of your lines are led back into this cockpit, so it's, uh, you know, it provides good ventilation to the rest of the salon, but fundamentally, it's a working cockpit. So, your boom is right there. And it's a bit, it's, uh, it's about, we've got about six and a half feet of clearance to the boom. And yeah, you know, it's like a gunboat or H&H uh, &H or some other Morelli and Melvin designs. Make our way into the porthole. We've got a nice big closet here, though actually, on second thought, I will not open this because I remember this boat is privately owned, so I don't want to disturb the owner's personal belongings. The holes are nice and narrow, and this boat is, I assure you, it's very light displacement. You can't have an electric boat that's heavy displacement. Things have really got to be efficient, or you'll just be stuck running the generator all the time. But lots of storage. Like I said, not all the drawers on a boat are going to be, uh, you know, storage. Some of these are mechanical, I assure you. Here we come to the owner's head. You've got a uh, nice shower with a wood floor and a wand, as well as an escape hatch that doubles for ventilation when you're at anchor. And there is your sink and vanity. The interior on this boat is quite plain. Uh, the owner's testimonial, I heard, was that uh, dislikes the use of wasting rare wood. So we'll finish up in the guests. Hi, no problem. Sorry, show is about to start. I don't want to overstay my welcome. We'll finish up in the forward guests. And this boat, you'll notice, is. Uh, double bunk. We've got steps to get to the climb up to the bunk there, so this is ideal for ideal for kids really. You'd struggle to fit a full-size adult in that. So you have one we have one passage and one goes to the forward guest and one comes to the one comes to the forward guest and one goes to the aft. The second head on the boat. And it is a Jack and Jill head. And if you're not familiar with the term Jack and Jill, it just means, you know, it's a one head that has two openings, so it can be shared by two cabins. Um, you'll see the same arrangement on a couple other performance catamarans. So where, I'm asking, where, where are the traveler controls? I saw it goes through that handheld. And the final stateroom. So you'll notice the finish on this yacht is quite plain. It's mostly just plain liner and a little bit of wood when necessary. 
All right, so that will wrap it up for the Ocean Renegade. So if you have any questions about her or want to go see the boat, do drop me a line. If you like the video, leave a like. If you dislike the video, leave a dislike, leave a comment. And as always, I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks.